guys, welcome to another video. This is a response to uh, Nova Bug, his Friday Foursome, which is a series, um, a weekly series, where he asks uh, your favourite four meh, of whatever it is he's talking about this week. Um, now, this is the last that he's making for quite a while, but I don't, I think I've only done two or three of these things. I spotted Chris's video the other day there. And it's your four favourite sports games. Now, I've got to say, asking me what my four favourite sport games is like asking uh, a wine connoisseur what his favourite four wines are. Where did I start? Now, I've actually written a list down. Uh, <laughs> memorable games for me, sports-wise. I mean, this, this list is just a fraction of what I like. You've got Jimmy White's uh, World One Snooker by... Uh, by Virgin on the Commodore Amiga. You've got the very, very first Pro Evolution soccer game on the PlayStation. Love that one to bits. That's always been my favourite sort of uh, current gen uh, football game. Um, international soccer on the Commodore 64. Don't know how many hours I must have spent on that one. Hyper Sports Arcade, Activision Decathlon by the C64. Um, various track and field games on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn. Um, what do you call it? Oh, what's it called? Sega, the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, Formula One, the very, very first Formula One game on the PlayStation. Loved that. Played that. I must have put in 50 hours in that game. Um, Football Manager by Addictive Games on the C64. The list goes on and on and on and on. So it was very, very difficult to try and pick my four favourite um, video sports games. Now, I have... Plumped for four. Now, if you ask me tomorrow, it'll probably be a different four. Well, maybe maybe one of them might be the same, but um, these are in no particular order at all. And the very, very first one I'm going to go for is Track and Field by Konami um, in the arcades. Now, this game, I can't remember when I first saw the game getting played, but in fact, you know, I'll tell you exactly when I saw it. It was up in the sports centre, our local sports centre, um, just up the road from me. The, that was the that was the, that was our arcade. Uh, we didn't live near arcades, so it was a local sports centre that we used to go up. They first had a Space Invaders cab, then they eventually got a track and field game. But um, it was later on, once main came along, that I got to really experience track and field. Um, why do I love it so much? It's to me, it's it's one of the most physical video games out there. To be good at it. You've got to be good physically, um, and I mean because it's a button mashing game. Um, it really, it's it's quite a physical game to play, um, and playing it with somebody else, standing shoulder to shoulder on an actual cab, it's just fantastic. It's real competitiveness at its very best. You know, the pushing to try and perfect. Um, different events I mean I'll just for example this morning I uh, my mate John Studley who's rather good at Pac-Man um, John knocked out a 5 million point score in track and field a few weeks ago so I emailed John this morning I didn't email him I'm, I'm like old school uh, I sent him a message on Facebook and I was asking John for some tips on the hammer throw because uh, that's one that I'm not very good at and John gave me a few tips so I'm going to go and try and uh, try that out later on but he just says practice 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 but the whole thing for track and field for me it is like a real sports like real sports each event requires discipline it requires effort it requires timing it requires skill you know you've got to learn each event and it just feels brilliant it's like a it's really really it's competitive in the, the true essence of the word so that's why I love track and field breaking a, a world record seeing your name up there in high score. I mean, I remember playing it on the Xbox 360, and for quite a long time, I was in. I think, I think I got to third place in the world on the javelin. I think it was, and uh, just seeing your name up there is fantastic. So yeah, I love track and field to bits. I absolutely love it. I'd love to get a real cab, but that's probably not going to happen. So yeah, track and field by Konami in the arcade. Second game, uh, again these are no particular order, second game, it had to be a football one, um, if it was for the number of hours that I played it, it might well be international soccer on the C64, but I've got to go for sensible soccer 
on the Commodore Amiga. Now this game, it, uh, I'm not a big football fan at all. I might be Scottish, well there again you're probably saying well that's why you wouldn't, uh, if you wouldn't want to, uh, you're not a football fan if you're Scottish because you don't qualify for anything. But I'll give you a quick, I read a quick uh, funny on Facebook this morning, they were going on about how West Germany, or sorry, Germany haven't conceded a goal in international competition for like uh, two years and somebody commented that Scotland hadn't conceded a goal in international competition for 22 years <laughs> because we've never qualified for anything since then but anyway I digress sensible soccer I'm not a football fan but I remember getting the disc stuck to the front of Amiga Power magazine and uh, I thought that my first impressions were that looks absolutely shit but then uh, I started playing the demo and wow it just absolutely gelled it just you know awesome I played that demo for hours and hours and hours and hours I got one of my mates over to play it and he fell in love with the game the same as myself and uh, as soon as the game came out I bought it and I bought every subsequent version it's just it's so fluid the the graphics yeah they're workable but it's just the the whole playability the way you bend your joy joystick to you know put in crosses and take shots and you can put height in it and you know it probably kids nowadays would look at sensible soccer and just think that looks crap and yeah it does look crap compare it with fifa 16 it looks shit but give me sensible soccer any day of the week um the thing for me is the fact that me being a non-football person got me playing a football game says it all it's all about the playability um i've got High hopes for Sociable Soccer, which is a new game that John here is releasing, so I did have a wee shot of that at the replay event in Glasgow. But anyway, back on topic. Sensible Soccer on the Commodore Amiga, fantastic game. I must have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours playing the different versions of that. Love it to bits. That is, it did come out on the SNES, Mega Drive, etc. Game Boy, I think. But you've got to play it on its spiritual home, and that is the Commodore Amiga. My third game will be Summer Games by Epix on the Commodore 64. Now, this game I first saw before I even owned a computer. I saw it in a computer shop eh, not far from me. It was a little Italian guy who owned this Atari computer shop. You know, he had a computer shop long before John Menzies, eh, Dixon's. Boots, W. H. Smith sold computer games and I can remember seeing this game running and I was just absolutely blown away with what this computer thing could do. Look at the gymnastics event, it's just, the animation is incredible. So when I eventually got enough money together to buy a C64, um, I rushed out and got Epix on disc. Uh, summer games uh, on disc I should say for my computer for the Commodore 64 now what made this special is you could have up to 8 players playing and back in 1985-86 yeah, you had more than you had 6 players I mean you, <laughs> nowadays you don't, I don't get any I don't get a chance to play video games against anybody other than my daughter um, but back when you were a kid you were still living at home you, your pals came round the house so we used to sometimes have you know, four, five, six of us sat around the Commodore 64. We would all have our respective country. And again, similar to hypersports, every event required, you had to master it. You had to figure out the controls. It was like a real sport. You had to find out the best way, the best technique to actually, you know, follow through with the sport um, over that event. Um, I mean, I was playing it, you know, I've, the video you're watching just now, that was me playing it yesterday and I was absolutely crap. But back in 1985-86, I would absolutely nail these events because I played them, I practiced and practiced and practiced. And like real sport, practice reaps rewards. And it was so satisfying. You know, it used to save world records. So if you beat a world record, it would play the national anthem. And I can remember, and it sounds ridiculous now, I can remember being really proud when I'm playing against my mates and I get a high score. And or I win the gold medal and it played your national anthem and you felt really really chuffed that you had done it that's the impact that game had on me um, it was a fantastic game 
and even now I do still play it. Yeah, it probably doesn't look as impressive, you know, now as it did then, but Epix Summer Games, I mean, they brought out Summer Games 2, which was fantastic. Then Winter Games, which wasn't quite so good, but the original Summer Games with Epix, that is the game that just, it, sh it just, it showed me just what computers were capable of. It just blew my mind. Uh, and the fact that that game probably taught me more national anthems than anything is a little uh, bonus. So yep, Summer Games by Epix on the Commodore 64. And the very last game um, I'm going to go for, and it's down to nostalgia and again the enjoyment I had, and that is Barry McGuigan's, I think it's Championship Boxing, to give it its proper name, by Activision on the C64. Now, this game, again, I saw a review in Zap of it. It reviewed, I think it got 80 odd percent. And uh, I went out, bought it, and I just loved it. I played it non stop. The thing for me is, you really felt when you were actually boxing. I mean, I'd played boxing games before, and it was just like hammering the fire button. There was really no skill involved. This game actually taught you techniques. You had your, your hooks, you had your uppercuts. You had your, whatever it is, your street punches, um, you blocked and that kind of stuff. And when you were actually fighting, it, you know, a lot of these games were over, you know, you are playing boxing and it was over really, really quickly. This game, you really, really, you got so drawn into it, you actually felt like you were taking part in a real boxing match. You know, your energy's right down, your stamina's down, and you're, you're trying to hang on, you know, you've got five seconds to level. You get to the bell, your energy goes back up again. And then, you know, you just try and, you know, wee hooks. You just jab away, jab away at your opponent. And then suddenly you see his stamina starting to fall down. Then you go for it. You go for the kill, knock him out. <laughs> Honestly, the satisfaction you got when you beat somebody was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, there's games now, I don't know what they're called. Final, is it Final or Final Fight? There's all these various electronic card games which are state of the art and I have tried to play these games in the past but you know um, they do require a lot of uh, investment of time but this game for all its blocky pixelated uh, shiteness it was just an absolute joy to play. I loved it to bits, I spent so much time playing that game. Um, you know it was right at the height when Barry McGuigan was a big name in boxing. You know, so that was, that. I loved it. It just really, really felt like you were taking part in the game. So you can probably see, guys, that the four games I have gone for, it's because you really feel like you are taking part in the sport. I'll beat you weren't physically running or throwing something. It was all in a video game, but you just felt like you were actually achieving something. When you got a gold medal or broke a record or won, you felt like you'd actually done it for real. And that is why I'm picking the four. But like I say, it's tomorrow it might be another four. But anyway, that is my uh, response to Nova Bugs Friday Foursome. So anyway, guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching.